The velocity of an object is given by the vector valued function v of t, and its position at t equals zero is given by the vector r of zero. We were asked to determine the vector valued function r of t, which is the position vector valued function. So we're given the vector valued function v of t, but remember, this is equal to the derivative of the position vector valued function, and we know the components are six t squared comma negative sine t comma two times e raised to the power of two t. To undo the derivative, or to determine the position vector value function, we need to integrate the velocity vector value function, which is the same as integrating r prime of t. To do this, we integrate each component of the velocity vector value function, which is given. So the s component is equal to the integral of six t squared dt. The y component is equal to the integral of negative sine t dt. And the z component is equal to the integral of two e raised to the power of two t dt. Let's first integrate the x component. So we know x of t equals the integral of six t squared dt. Integrating, we have six times t to the third divided by three plus a constant of integration. We will have three constants of integration. Let's call this first constant c sub one. Simplifying, x of t is equal to two t to the third plus c sub one. And now let's find the y component where y of t equals the integral of negative sine t dt. Remember the integral of sine is negative cosine, and therefore the integral of negative sine t is equal to positive cosine t, plus let's call it c sub two. And now let's find the z component. z of t is equal to the integral of two e raised to the power of two t dt. To integrate here, we'll have to perform u substitution, where u is equal to two t. Differential u is equal to two dt. Dividing both sides by two, we know that one half du is equal to dt. So showing the u substitution, let's go ahead and factor out the two. dt is equal to one half du, and two t is equal to u, so we have e to the u. Simplifying here, two times one half is one. So the integral is equal to e to the u, which is really e to the two t. Let's call it plus c sub three. And now we need to find c sub one, c sub two, and c sub three. And we can do this because we know that r of zero has components one comma three comma two, which means x of zero, we know must equal one. So we substitute zero for t in the antiderivative, which gives us two times zero cubed plus c sub one, again, must equal one. Well, two times zero cubed is zero, and therefore we know that c sub one is equal to one, which tells us x of t is equal to two t to the third plus one. And now we'll find y of zero. We know y of zero must be equal to three, because we're given r of zero has a y component of three. So y of zero is equal to cosine zero plus c sub two, which again we know must equal three. Well cosine zero is equal to one, one plus two is equal to three, c sub two is equal to two, which means y of t is equal to cosine t plus two. And now let's find z of zero, we know z of zero must equal two. Substituting zero for t into z of t gives us e raised to the power of two times zero plus c sub three, which we know must equal two. e to the zero is equal to one, one plus one is equal to two, c sub three equals one. Now we know z of t is equal to e raised to the power of two t plus one. And now we have the three components of the position vector valued function r of t. We now know the vector valued function r of t 
has an x component of 2 t to the third plus 1, a y component of cosine t plus 2, and a z component of e to the 2t plus 1. I hope you found this helpful.